top story at six. Frank and Meg, thank you. I'm coming to you from our Flint studio tonight. In a major reversal, the mayor of Flint announces that when it comes to the city's water, they will stay the course. And a multiple alarm fire breaks out at a vacant apartment complex. What investigators are saying about the possible cause. The news at 6 starts right now. WNEM TV 5 News starts right now with a breaking news alert. Smoke could be seen for miles all over Genesee County when flames started spilling from the Westwood Manor apartments this afternoon. Several fire departments responded to the multiple alarm blaze. It forced a shutdown of Clio Road in Mount Morris Township as crews battled the flames at the abandoned apartment complex. TV5's Rachel McCurry joins us live from the apartments. And Rachel, what are you learning about the possible cause tonight? Thanks, David. Yeah, that's right. Fire crews are calling this fire suspicious, yet it's too early to tell exactly what caused it. Now, take a look behind me. You can see crews working to get this fire out, still spraying the area. Uh, parts of the building are still smoldering, and because of a natural gas leak, there are still some flames. It was a much different scene just after one this afternoon, though, when it started here at Westwood Manor off Clio Road. Three buildings in the complex were burned. There was a massive smoke cloud that you could see from miles away. Mount Morris Fire Chief says they've had problems in this area before. We've had a couple problems here in the past. We were here a couple months ago and they had a large brush fire going and we got there, was able to knock that down. But this isn't the first time that something's happened back here. High winds caused the fire to spread quickly. Luckily, the buildings have been vacant for a few years now and no injuries were reported, but make sure to avoid Clio Road near Cooper Avenue. The crews here say that that road will remain closed for a few more hours to so make sure you find an alternate route. Right now, reporting in Mount Morris Township, Rachel McCrary, WNEM TV5. All right, Rachel, thank you. And stay with TV5 and WNEM.com for more on this developing story on air, online, and on the TV5 mobile app. So staying with Great Lakes Water Authority means Flint doesn't have to switch its water source again. That was one of the driving factors behind Mayor Karen Weaver's recommendation that the city keeps getting its water from the Detroit system. Ensuring the public's health and safety was the top priority the city considered when reaching today's decision. On day 1089 of the water crisis, this is an about face to the original plan announced last year in which the city would eventually draw from the new KWA pipeline. TV5 Samaya Hernandez looks further into today's announcement. Hi, David. Now, the last time the city switched its water source back in 2014 led to the water crisis. So there was a lot of anxiety felt by both residents and city officials leading up to today's recommendation by the mayor. The mayor has heard the people's cry. The people have said from the very beginning they did not want to be a part of KWA. Mayor Karen Weaver today announcing a deal that keeps the Detroit connection as Flint's long-term water source while making Genesee County and the KWA its backup source. Pastor Alan Overton represents a group of local reverends who have become activists in the water crisis. You got some major players that's making this decision and I think the people will have an opportunity to look at this and evaluate this and understand this is the best thing for the residents of the city of Flint. The deal includes returning a 72-inch transmission line back to the city, water bill assistance for residents, and essentially it eliminates Flint's debt to the KWA in exchange for Flint's rights to that pipeline. Without a deal, Flint would be on the hook for annual payments of $7 million to the KWA pipeline. The mayor said she looked at over a dozen options for more than six months, and this was the best. But several council members say they haven't been kept in the loop. As of this moment in time, City Council has never been presented with any facts and figures, no analysis. Field says the mayor wanted to meet with several council leaders hours before Tuesday's press conference. But the press conference was the first she's heard of any options. It's especially interesting because who makes the final decision on this? City Council does. The final decision is still a month away, but in a city still healing from the water crisis, the mayor says she doesn't want to subject residents to another risk. Reporting in Flint, Samaya Hernandez, WNEM TV5. 
All right, Samaya, thank you. Genesee County Drain Commissioner and CEO of the KWA Pipeline, Jeff Wright, issued a statement today regarding the mayor's decision to stay with the Great Lakes Water Authority. It reads in part, under the mayor's recommended plan, not only will Flint remain a KWA member, but our authority will gain a beneficial relationship with GLWA. In an era of regionalism and regional government cooperation, I believe Flint, Genesee County, and GLWA can work together for the betterment of all of our residents. Now you can see Mayor Weaver's entire announcement, plus the latest on the Flint water crisis, in the special section of WNEM.com. A beautiful spring day around mid-Michigan as we look live over Midland and Bay City, but it will be a different story by this time tomorrow. Let's go back to our studios in Saginaw where Chief Meteorologist Brian Bachman has a closer look at the forecast. Hi, Brian. Hi there, David. That's right. After a pretty good amount of sunshine we actually retreated to over the course of our Tuesday, we've already given it back up in a lot of spots to some cloudy skies rolling in ahead of our next disturbance. But clouds are not. Still a very nice Tuesday evening ahead of us here with this live look over Lake Elm elementary school in Pigeon. 60 degrees still there right now, so even a lot of you folks who in the thumb yesterday didn't really get into those warmer temperatures, you've moderated pretty nicely with that added sun today, but hey, let's stop talking about how sunny it was and just take a replay of it for ourselves. Beautiful day, of course, really until about the mid stages of the afternoon. Then, of course, you saw those clouds come streaming in from the west, and that brings us right here into the present time frame right now, but at least in the near term this evening, the wet weather is going to hold off for a little bit, so it's not really going to have a major impact on your Tuesday evening plans. Let's take a look at those temperatures. Temperatures once again, 60 degrees even now in Houghton Lake. You've come up a degree in the last hour. 65 holding steady in Saginaw, 63 in Flint. It's really only our farthest eastern immediate shoreline areas once again today that are getting that cooling effect off of Lake Huron. Port Hope sitting at a chillier 46 degrees, but boy, what a contrast to the southwest corner of the state where we're in the low 70s. So on the first one, five sky tracker, here come those clouds once again. They're streaming in ahead of a warm frontal boundary, which is snaked back through parts of southern Wisconsin tonight. You can see ultimately, though, those clouds will begin to throw a few lighter showers at us, mainly for the second half of the overnight period. So as you head home this evening, sitting down to dinner, picking the kids up, you'll be in good shape on the road. 63 degrees at 7 o'clock, just a mostly cloudy sky. We'll keep it generally cloudy, increasingly so, in fact, through the first half of the night, dropping down to our low temp in the low 50s by about 1 a.m. Then the light scattered showers roll in closer to 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. Then a much bigger dose of rain coming our way after these showers. We'll show you when coming up. All right, Brian, thank you. Developing news. Three people are now charged with murder after a body was discovered inside the trunk of a car at a local baseball field earlier this month. The victim, 42-year-old Freddie Porter, was found dead in the parking lot of Mitchell Softball Park in Corona on April 6th. Flint residents, 33-year-old Ojuan King, 27-year-old Hillary Marshall, and 25-year-old Wesley Wilson are all facing homicide charges, among others. It's still unclear how Porter died. Investigators believe the trio killed Porter and left his body in the car. Well, they're considered a more convenient alternative to regular toilet paper, but it turns out those flushable wipes may not be so flushable after all. They're causing headaches for sewer systems all over the nation. It's a phenomenon known as ragging, and as TV5's James Felton tells us, they're wreaking havoc in mid-Michigan as well. The wipes are popular now. Baby wipes, disinfecting wipes, wet wipes, you name it. Odds are they're stuck in a sewer near you. Thanks to these flushable but not biodegradable items being sent down the toilet. Sharon Cooper is the superintendent at the Bay City Wastewater Treatment Plant. We see them uh, here at the plant in our tanks, in our uh, screening, in our rigs. We uh, have to do a lot of cleaning. Which is why Cooper wants people to know to take these items and put them in the trash instead of flushing them down the toilet, which is what people we talked to already said they do. No, I never did. Because they clog the toilet. Because it clogs up the uh, drainage, they're not disposable. I just throw them away. I know that it can clog up the sewer system. Water plant managers hope a steady stream of information will lead to a reduction in scenes like these, encouraging all of us to flush wisely. Toilet paper is what you can flush down the toilet. Anything else, put it in the trash. Reporting in Bay County, James Felton, WNEM, TV5. And some of our Facebook friends have seen issues with the flushable wipes. Angela says we use them all the time. Just spent 275 bucks cleaning the drain out. And he sa she said these wipes and lady products are the main reason. But Kimberly adds, I never flush them, even if they say you can. 
trust issues? Well, you can join the conversation as well on our Facebook page or tweet us with the hashtag FastFeedback. A local robotics team has a chance to compete in the world finals. We'll tell you how you can help these high schoolers make the once-in-a-lifetime trip. And a local boutique is hosting a special event to help foster children in mid-Michigan. You're watching TV5 News at 6, serving Birch Run, Davison, Vassar, and your hometown too. It's coverage you can count on.